Okay, you can count now. Okay, thank you so much. I'm Martin. I'm yeah, I'm an economic historian. I'm sorry. So I'm probably the first and last you've ever met. So I actually wonder what first comes to mind when you think about an economic historian. So please close your eyes, right? And try to visualize an economic historian. Yeah? Eh, no touching. Okay, open your eyes now. Okay, some of you thinking more about historian may have imagined a guy, an old guy with a white beard, very boring, talking a lot, right? Something like this, right? <laughs> now, others, you know, may have thought more of an economist, right? Something like well-dressed with a fancy suit, a nice haircut, right? You can actually identify an economist with weird dancing moves and dancing floor, something like this, right? So actually, an economic historian is a mix of both of them, right? It's a researcher who cares about data, right? Who connects the past to the present and the future, cares about data, but is very aware of the limitations of it, uh, very rigorous with analysis, obsessed with causal effects, but you know, we care also about the big picture, about the implications. And finally, we all love maps. Right, you may have the question, oh, I am more a historian or an economist? Just by yourself. I mean. All right, so what kind of questions do we address in economic history? Tons of them. From living standards in the Middle Ages, to the impact of slavery in African development, to even how being exposed to war as a child can affect mental health 50, 60, 70 years later when you're in your elderly. What do I do in my research? I focus on migration. I focus on the impact of migration flows, on economic development, on the diffusion of norms and beliefs, and on migrants integration. As you can see, very diverse field, and please remember this, economics is not finance, all right? So how do we analyze something that happened like hundreds of years ago, right? This is crazy, right? So as usual in research, we look for data, right? But we're going to go to the past with a time travel machine, right? I cannot go and interview people 300 years ago. Luckily, others did it for us, right? Uh, institutions, companies, other historians and geographers in the past, they all collected data. Um, actually, we can find it. Sometimes it's online, in PDF, right? Others, you have to go to the archives and find it on your own. And this is quite challenging because archives can be messy, right? <laughs> Now, say that you found your sources. Hooray, the data is here. Isn't it? The data is there? Well, you have like 3,000 books. How are you going to analyze that, right? So actually, back in the days, if you were, a, you were a PhD student, you would copy by hand all this data, right? I spent months copying data by hand for my thesis, right? If you were a professor, right, you could have an army of students doing it for you. So how do we go from this to this? Right? And from this to this. Yeah, with an army of students. But luckily, things have started to change. And in the past couple of years, we have now a powerful ally. Yeah, machines, right? So now we have software of optical character recognition and artificial intelligence that can actually, you know, go through the pixels of a picture and understand numbers and text and transcribing for us, right? So sometimes it makes errors, but we are humans, right? We can control the machine and improve the algorithm. And once it gets it right, it's the same effort to curate one table of data or one million tables. It's just nuts, right? So this is revolutionizing our field. Okay, so we got our data, how we analyze it, right? So think one of my key questions of interest, right? What is the impact of immigration? on economic development. Okay, you may think, let's look at some places that got some migrants, others got fewer migrants and none, and let's see how they evolve over time, right? And you see if they are richer or not, and so on. Wrong! This is just a pure correlation. Correlation doesn't imply causation. Whoops, something went. Correlation doesn't imply causation, right? And that's where the economist bit comes, right? Uh, we cannot just like correlate things and think, that, oh yeah, the migration costs uh, growth because you know migrants could have decided to move to places that would grow more, that were booming, right? And they self-select, right? They decide, they choose by themselves. This is not like an experiment where you randomize a pill, right? And you compare, you compare treatment and control. But yeah. Here is where history comes handy, because history is like a laboratory. 
history gives us natural experiments. It gives us situations that create randomness. It gives us situations that resemble an uh, experimental setting. In the context of migration, for instance, you want things that actually sort of randomly assign people to places, and then you can do this naive comparison. This can be things like the expansion of transportation, right? Making people settle in one place or another. This can be a war, making people flee from their countries unexpectedly and settling in others. Or policies, right? Policies that restrict how many people come, who comes, right? Or where, where they locate, right? So all these examples help us identify cause and effect. Now, okay, so we use a bunch of statistical methods, regression, so, so blah, 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 blah. Like our previous colleague, we are just in front of the computer, right, making code. So just a recap, we read tons of books, uh, we go to their archives, we find data, we try to curate it, we analyze it, and eventually you get some insights, right? And if you dig deep enough throughout your career, you may develop some wisdom. If you dig too much, well, maybe you develop other things, right? So let's take a step back and think why economic history is not just fascinating, but so important. So first, because it helps us to analyze novel questions, right? Things that we cannot analyze today with contemporary data or methods. So this is an example of the Luxembourgish census of the 1840s. This is a form from a household. You can see the names of people, their jobs, when they were born, where. And you can follow these people over time, every couple of years. You know who they marry, if they move, if they change jobs, right? You can analyze their whole lives. Not only for them, for their children. And for the children of their children, right? You have decades of data waiting for you to analyze it, opening a whole new scope of research, right? A second reason why economic history is just so important is because it gives us a long-term perspective. If you want to analyze the effect of a policy or any event, you need time to pass by. Again, think about migration. A politician, a regular economist, will only focus on the short run. Migrants come, what's going to happen to wages and unemployment next year, in two years? Okay, this is important, but it's not enough. What's going to happen in 10 years? Labor market adjusts, people relocate, some people come back, migrants are going to stay and have kids. What's going to be the contribution of those kids, second generation migrants? We cannot tell just one number. We have to have a long-term perspective to say if something is beneficial or not. In the short run, it may be positive, negative. In the long run, effects vanish or even switch signs. So we have, we need a long-term perspective. Short run effects are just the tip of the iceberg. And finally, why this is so, so, so important is because it can guide public policies today. Economic history is useful to guide policies on the most pressing issues we face as a society. Climate change, conflict, migration, right? We can rely on past insights to guide policies today. And this is a nice example. 100 years ago, millions of Europeans migrated to the United States. Americans received them with fear. They thought they would steal native jobs. They thought they would steal, they would change their culture, right? And it turns out that recent research has shown that those places that took more migrants actually benefited more in the long run. They have more prosperity and migrants did actually integrate. Actually, where there was more discrimination or segregation, there were no benefits at all, right? Out of fulfilling prophecy. And this, we know the answers. We got these insights thanks to research in economic history. Americans, 100 years ago, they didn't have these insights, right? They let their fear motivate their policies, and they introduced the most severe restrictive immigration policies ever. They halt entirely migration flows in the 1920s, changing dramatically the future of the country, right? That's why economic history is so important. It actually, you know, I think that we need economic historians more than ever, right? We need these insights more than ever. In a time of misinformation, in a time of big challenges, we need to hear all researchers. So I hope I could convey my message and convince you that research in economic history is very valuable. And it's not just to understand better our past, it's also valuable to change our future. Thank you.